よろしくお願いします。Hello, I'm presenting about Ruby library to connect with the blockchain called Ethereum.、Uh, my name is Yuta Kurotaki, and I have spoken at past Ruby Kaigi 2018 and coached at Rails Girls. I'm maintainer of ETHRB. I'm going to talk about this topic today. First,、uh, what is Ethereum? First, let me give you an overview of what Ethereum is. It is a blockchain called by Vitalik in 2013. It enables trustless on the blockchain. Transactions and applications are currently running on it. It is sometimes called a world computer or a world state because it propagates to nodes around the world and manages state in the world. The Ethereum white paper contains this diagram. A transaction is executed to update the status. In this example, 10 ETH is sent from the from address to the to address. The transaction is captured and more and more blocks are chained together. This is a service called ETHSCAN. You can see all the history on the Ethereum blockchain on the web. You can see that many transactions are executed and captured in a single block. This can be seen by anyone. It is not possible to alter a block that has been. Created in the past.、Uh, today, let's talk a look into the world of blockchain with ETHRB. Let's talk about address on Ethereum. One thing we are all familiar with is blockchain wallet. For example, MetaMask. It is needed to send and receive ETH on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, this is an、uh, ETHRB code.、Uh, you can easily create an address in Ruby code in ETHRB.、Uh, there is a public key. And private key are created. From here, an address is created. This will be unique and different from others. So,、uh, this is a、uh, Ethereum address. The address looks like this, starting with 0x42 characters long. The hash value that comes Out from the public key,、uh, public, public key K through the ketchak 256 function is obtained. Take the last 20 bytes, 40 characters, and prefix it with 0x. So you may have. Uh, you may have noticed that when you copy an address from MetaMask or other wallet, it contains both upper and lower case letters.、Uh, that is a checksum、uh, for humans. It is hard to write down this address. You might make a mistake.、Uh, Checking mechanism was 
introduced in EIP 55. Uh, it is described in EIP the Ethereum Improvement Proposals, where the specification is being developed, uh, like non fungible token NFT implementations are described in EIP 721. So, Ethereum addresses are case insensitive, but when they contain uppercase letters. The checksum can be used to check for typing errors. Here is my uh, address, Ethereum address 0xA33. Uh, if I made a typing a mistake uh, address, it can be detected. Uh, last letters uh, B uh, is valid. But the last letter is D, is invalid. Uh, recently, there is ENS, which was proposed in EIP 137 in 2016. ENS is something that more and more people are using these days. You may have seen string like uh, K-U-R-O-T-A-K-Y that is on the internet. Next, let's take a look at Ethereum signatures. The signature algorithm called ECDSA is used here. This is used for three purposes. And one, a proof of authorization to make ETH payment or execute smart contract. Uh, two, proof that the signature is non repudiation Three, pro proof that no one has modified the transaction data since it was signed. So in ESRB, uh, to sign an application, you can use the method personal sign. You may have been asked to sign on application when you access it with MetaMask, for example. Uh, for signature, personal sign should be prefixed to the message. The hash value is calculated with Ketchak 256. Uh, the uh, sign method returns a hexadecimal signature. Using this, for example, the owner of the private key can sign the transaction. Uh, this is a test case for the sign method the public key can be recovered with the recover method. Here, it makes sense to add the chain ID when signing. There is a simple replay attack protection in EIP 155. So, by in including the chain ID before signing, the Transaction can cannot be replayed on another blockchain. Changing the chain ID will invalidate the signature. Uh, it is a signature verify method. So there are many IDs for these chains. Uh, not only Ethereum, but also uh, Optimates, uh, Polygon, and other chains called Layer 2 side chains, and others have IDs. Uh, 
Uh, next, I will now talk about transactions. Uh, there is a library called Go Ethereum uh, called Guess. Uh, this is a node of the Ethereum blockchain. By connecting to this node, we can send out transaction. This time we will run it in a test environment. We will look at a sample. Guess will output log like this. Uh, run guess hyphen hyphen dev http uh, look like uh, this log. Now create now create a client with is a client create. This is to connect to the Ethereum node. Here we are connecting via HTTP. Uh, let's create an Ethereum address and send ETH. When I just created as an address, the balance is zero. Try to send 99 ETH by executing the transfer and wait function. With get balance, we can check the balance of the address. This is about the unit of is. One way is the smallest unit. In this result, the calculation is 99 is. Uh, finally, I will talk about a smart contract. This is about how to interact with smart contract. Uh, smart contracts can run programs on the blockchain. It is a mechanism that allows for automatic execution of contracts. There are many use cases for smart contract. Here is a list of ideas shown by Vitalik. Uh, use, case, use cases here. DeFi, uh, DeFi is decentralized finance. Uh, identify, identity, uh, sign in with a Ethereum account. Uh, crypto economics. A sticker, a budget, and so on. Smart contracts are written in a language called Solidity. Here we define get and set. Ah, sorry. Here we define get and set functions. The source code written in Solidity it's compiled by Solidity compiler called SolC and runs on the Ethereum virtual machine. Uh, SolC is also used in ETHRB. Uh, after compiling ABI and bytecode and opcode can be generated. Finally, it is executed on EVM, Ethereum Virtual Machine. In ethrb, ETH contract dot from file allows you to read from the SOL file and mapping it to a Ruby object. The dummy SOL file looks like this. Use this one. Then uh, that dummy sort of uh, file uh, converted to ABI and binary file. T 
To deploy a smart contract, pass the cont contract object to deploy and wait method and execute it. Now the deployed smart contract is called with the call method or the transact and wait method. Uh, this example, the call method Call method in ISRB is used to call the smart contracts get function. In this way, a process that does not require a transaction and does not write anything to the blockchain can be called by using the call method. Uh, Transact and wait method. This one executes a transaction on the blockchain. Use this method when you want to execute a function that writes information to the blockchain. Uh, this is a sample application, sample application code. Uh, there is an Ethereum login sample application that you can try. Uh, this is a wallet such as MetaMask that enables sign up and login. Users can log in without managing passwords on the web application. And this is a Ethereum authentication demo. Uh, input, uh, my name, Kurotaki. Uh, MetaMask notification. This is uh, sign up done. Next, uh, login with Ethereum. It is user information. Uh, user has a uh, username, its address, its nouns. Uh, next sample application. There is also a sample application for NFT, non fungible token. Here is a video of the application in the running state. Uh, you can try out applications that publish non-fungible token like this. Uh, after, uh, please see the Solidity code and Ruby code on GitHub. Uh, this uh, NFT uh, show page, uh, NFT index page. Uh, this, is, this book is Japanese only, but if you are interested, please pick it up. Last, uh, this conclusion. Uh, today, uh, I explained the overview of the Ethereum blockchain and ex uh, explained the, the address mechanism, signatures, and EIP with ISRB. 
and explain smart contract execution with its RV. Uh, future of ESRV. Library, uh, many Ethereum libraries are mostly a Web3.js, ESRJS, but I think it will be good to work on it as a language diversity. I want to make it possible to create DApps decentralized applications in Ruby and Rails. I will also be able to take advantage of existing Rails application assets. I want to be able to write blockchain applications in Ruby, a fun language. Uh, thanks to uh, is Marek. Uh, he brought me into the world of Ethereum.rb. Uh, Q9F, uh, he is uh, a free. He promotes and maintains the Ethereum ESRB project with us. And GMO Paperbo, Web3 development team, and Ruby Kaigi staff, organizers, committers, and attendees. Thank you so much. Thanks.